It's important to understand the impact that focal length will have on your photograph because it can change the perspective of your scene. We're going to talk about six different focal length ranges, starting with fisheye. So fisheye photography is anything from about 14 millimeters and wider. So nine millimeters is, an, is often a popular fisheye lens, but it's got very niche uses. You don't see it much out of special effects like lamography or sometimes concert photography, you can get a really good photo of a whole venue with, with one single fisheye lens. It's, it, the thing about fisheye is it adds a lot of distortion to the corners. It's got this bulbous look to it where the lines are no longer straight, they curve. And that has its uses, like I've said, but it's not something I do a lot of. I'm much more interested in ultra wide angle. Ultra wide angle is from about 14 millimeters to 24 millimeters. And this has many more uses because it captures much more of the scene without adding so much distortion. The next focal length range is wide angle. Wide angle is from about 24 millimeters to 35 millimeters. It's a pretty standard wide angle range. It's great for landscape photography and capturing scenes like the one I'm looking at over here. I would shoot this at around 24 millimeters. After that, we have the standard, standard zoom range, which is from 35 to 70 millimeters. So when you get a lens like this, which is a 24 to 70, you have a wide angle and a standard zoom range. It has many uses. You often find prime lenses in this range, so 35 millimeters and 50 millimeters. 35 millimeters is about what we see with the human eye without getting into all the peripheral vision. If you take a photo of just the scene in front of you, at 35 millimeters, that's pretty much what we look at as humans. When you get into the ultra wide, the 14 millimeter, that's when you start to include all of the peripheral vision as well. After that, we have mild telephoto that goes from 70 millimeters to 105 millimeters. And this is more useful for portrait photography. You'll find, I would say, uh, the vast majority of portrait photography is shot at a telephoto range from 70 millimeters and onwards. You do get some at 50 millimeters, but 70 to 105 is where you're gonna see a lot of telephoto images for portrait photography. And after that, we have regular telephoto. That's 105 millimeters and onwards. This is good for capturing things in the distance, obviously. Sports photography, very popular for sports photography, racing cars, athletes, these sorts of things. It's a very popular zoom range. You may be wondering, why is the focal length measured in, in millimeters? I mean, it's a metric measurement for measuring the field of view. That doesn't make much sense. Well, it's actually quite interesting. It is the distance between the point of convergence inside your lens, which I'll get to in just a moment, and your camera sensor or piece of film. So it's from here to here depending on where you're zooming. And that is why a wide angle lens like this one here, it's an 18 millimeter, it's quite a short lens. And this 135 millimeter lens here, a Canon lens, which is a, um, a telephoto lens, is much longer. You can see the comparison. And that's why telephoto lenses, especially when they get into the 200 millimeter range, are actually really big and quite heavy too. So what is the point of convergence? Well, I don't tend to go into too much unnecessary detail in this course because a lot of it will only serve to confuse you and it's not that beneficial, but I think this is quite interesting. So when the light enters your lens, it captures the scene as it is. And what it does is it passes through some glass and it flips upside down and it kind of meets like this and it goes upside down onto the camera's sensor. And when it meets in the middle, this is a point of convergence. This is where all of that light is passing through the same spot and then coming back out again, upside down and reaches the camera sensor. That's the point of convergence. And it's that distance between there and the camera sensor or piece of film that we measure the focal length. So that's focal length. Before we finish, I wanna show you how the perspective of a scene changes with the focal length. Now it's worth saying here that the focal length is not what's changing the perspective. It's actually your distance away from the subject, but your distance away from the subject and the focal length tend to go hand in hand. So I'm gonna show you a video now that we've just shot and it shows you a wide angle all the way to the telephoto and you can see how the perspective changes for the subject. It's why you often shoot portraits at a longer telephoto distance because you compress the image and you push all the details in and the faces don't look like they're bulging out as much. Not that they bulge out in real life, but it kind of makes everything look a little bit more beautiful. So let's have a look at that now. So I'm about as close as I can get to this car and the whole car is in the frame. 
That's ultra wide angle at 14 millimeters. You can see a lot of distortion to this shape, but it's a cool way to capture the car. Now I'm gonna try and keep the car in the frame and change lenses and show you the different focal lengths. So now I'm at 24 millimeters. I'm a little bit further away and you can see that I'm capturing pretty much the same thing. I'll back away a little bit further. I'm gonna set it to 35, which is the start of the standard range. I'm going to go to 70. I'm going to switch lenses now and I'm going to 100 millimeters, which is a prime lens I own. You start to see I go substantially further away. And now finally I'm using a telephoto lens, 135 millimeters, and I'm substantially further away than I was in that first shot. As I flick through the photos on my camera here, I can see a huge difference in how this car is presented based on my distance away from the car. And the distance away from the car, like I said, goes hand in hand with the focal length. That perspective changes quite significantly. It's why we use a wide angle lens for a landscape photograph. We want to capture everything as if we're in that moment. We want to capture the scene and the perspective as if we're standing there. A portrait photograph, a telephoto distance, telephoto length works much more in its favor because it gets to compress some of the features. Everything looks a little bit cleaner. And that's why we use these different focal length ranges. It's all to do with the distance and the perspective. I want to show you all the different ways you can shoot a single subject just by using different focal lengths. So starting with telephoto here, I've got a 135 on my camera. I'm gonna get a portrait shot of this shipwreck in the distance. I'm gonna try and get out a little bit on it. Now I'm going to switch over to the 100. Let's get a little bit closer. Again, I have to stress this isn't about the focal length. It's about how far away you are from the subject. I'm going to stand on this rocky outcrow. It's a pretty decent photo at 100 millimeters. I'm going to 70 now, which is around the end of the standard range. I think I'm gonna to have to get a view from the other side. That makes for a nice portrait shot. Now I'm going to 35 millimeters. Because this is wider, I can get more of the curvature of the, of the sea going in towards the boat. Keep going around. I'm going to go to 24 millimeters now. The good thing about 24 millimeters is you don't get that much distortion. The boat will continue to look pretty much exactly like that. 14 millimeters on the other hand adds all kinds of distortion. That's a nice shot. And finally, for good luck, we're going to go to 14 millimeters for the ultra wide angle. So that's how close I can get and still have the whole ship in frame. I have to say I like the 100 millimeter shot because you get some of the context of the sea coming up. And I like the 35 and 24 because you get the wide angle and the water going up towards the ship. We're actually gonna shoot it again in a moment to get some sunset, but we're gonna do it from over there because then we get the sunset in the background and these clouds will light up. I just wanted to show you how having a range of focal length at your disposal can dramatically change the photos you take. You don't always have to go for that wide angle look on a wide angle photo. If you're doing a landscape, it doesn't have to be wide angle. It can be telephoto if you want it to. It all depends on how far away you are and what part of the scene you want to capture. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. We've got a couple articles for you and also a link to my course, Photography for Beginners. It's an online course for beginners and it is everything you could ever want to know to get started with photography. And also, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. We're releasing new videos every Monday at 12 p.m. London time, so you'll see much more content like this. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.